Michelle here with our good friend Kim Bear as we are talking about some things uh, in some cases maybe not so pleasant. <laughs> no. Michelle. Yeah, exciting stuff today. If All you, about evictions. If, yeah, if you're a <laughs> renter and you've heard these words, get out. Uh, well, then this is right up your alley, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Well, and I don't think we've talked about this on air. So I was trying to come up with something new that we haven't talked about before. And I thought, well, you know what? We get calls all the time, not only from landlords, but also from people who have not paid their rent and mm -hmm. they've gotten the notice. And uh, there's a lot of kind of confusion about what the notice means. So I thought maybe we'd talk about that and maybe talk about the process. Yeah, a little okay. bit. Are, there, are there certain times <laughs> of the year that it evictions are higher than others by chance you know um i do think it's kind of in the spring and then we also and i think it's because maybe people get behind at christmas mm -hmm. because they overspend that's just yeah. me because we do see a lot of them in january february march mm -hmm. it seems like you know and then there are just um you know it's a problem that really is goes on all okay, year year round problem. yeah unfortunately okay so what is the so. first thing that uh like a renter for example right. might encounter Right. So, and today we're only talking about residential leases because okay. commercial leases are a whole different animal. Ooh, right. Yes. So, um, so in a residential lease, you know, if you're renting a house, you're renting an apartment, um, usually, not always, but usually your rent is due on the first of the month. Right. So let's say that you get behind and you haven't paid it and your landlord is over that. And your landlord says, you know what, um, you know, Lou keeps, he's late all the time, or maybe I don't like Lou, or maybe I want to, I want to get Lou out because I'm going to do something with the property um, and so you're late on the rent so I would if I'm the landlord I have to give you a three-day notice to quit and what that is is it's really a, a notice to cure so from the time you get it you have three days to get your rent paid in full Okay. Um, and uh, the notice will tell you you have three days. It will tell you how much is due, and it's going to say, if you don't pay, then I'm going to evict you. Now, the calls that we get from tenants is they think when they get that three-day notice to quit that that means they've got three days to move out. Which would shock a lot of people. Right. It's, it's, that's not very much time to, let, mm -hmm. to pack, let alone go find a new place, and, and if, right. especially if money's tight. So really what the three-day notice to cure is, is it's three days of notice to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. And let's say, let's say that you don't have the money. So you don't pay me. I've given you the three days notice. And so now it's the fourth day. Um, it doesn't mean that I, I would like you to be gone. But if you're still there, what I have to go do is I have to go to small claims court and I have to file an action. It's called a forcible entry and detainer. So I have to file an action and we actually have to have a court hearing so I can get an order to throw you out. And how long does that usually take? Um, you know, it can usually take about three weeks, four weeks. Really? That yes, long? Yes. What I mean, if they get paid up during that window of time? Well, then it's up to it's, me. It's up okay. to me. Am I going to take the money or not take the money? If I really want him out, maybe this is a problem that goes on every month or every other month, and I, I really want... You say no. I can I, say, I, nope, that, you didn't it. pay it. Yeah. So would they be living there free then? Yeah, basically, they're basically. living there free. Okay. So so a landlord wants to speed the process up because they're having a whole month with no money, and they probably want to get in there, get it cleaned up so that they, they can re-rent it. Mm -hmm. um, and the tenant, of course, is kind of going, well, the, the longer, the better, because I've got to try and save money because now I've got to pay a deposit and I've got to go find a new place to, to pay. Right. So the other thing that we see is um, um, three-day notice to quit. Let's say that um, you are a big partier and you've got somebody over at your place and, and maybe I hear gunshots or something like that. So if there's something going on in the apartment that presents a uh, clear and present danger, then I have the right to give you a notice and say, look, knock that off. You're, you're, you're creating a danger you know, for the other tenants, you know, for public um, and so that's another reason why you can evict somebody and then we see things like let's say um, let's say Michelle's renting from me and my lease says no dogs and I drive by and I see you out walking a dog and I'm like what I told her no dogs so I would give you a notice and and that type of notice typically is seven days and I would yeah. say Michelle get rid of the dog and so you would have seven days to, to cure it to get rid of the dog what right. about the date so if you if you're filing something for they're dangerous or what have you right. do they have a certain window of time too to kind of clean yes. up their act yes and... usually three days if it's something they can cure let's say that um, that Lou has just this crazy friend that always comes to visit him, or um, or which, are which all he of them. does, <laughs> which are all <laughs> of them. right, right, and, and so you got to get rid of that person. That person can't be there, or, or you, you can't get rid of him as a friend, but you just can't have that person at your residence. At the residence, at the residence. At the residence. Okay. Maybe you got to get rid of your guns. Maybe you got to get rid of. I mean, so if it's something you can fix, you've got to do. You've got to take the action to fix it. 
Um, so let's go ahead and move forward. Let's say that you don't, we don't, you don't remedy anything. Mm -hmm. And so now uh, we're gonna, you're gonna get served again with a piece of paper saying this is when the hearing is at small claims. Um, the law requires that you have at least three days notice before the hearing. So let's say that it's on the fourth day. I've already given you the third three day notice okay. to quit. You didn't get your rent paid. So now I say to my process server, hey, go go serve Lou with this, because now I've, now, now I've set it for hearing. So typically a landlord wants to set it for at least a week out, maybe two weeks out, because if, if you don't get notice of at least three days before the hearing, then the judge will continue the hearing or dismiss it. So really? they there's could dismiss it? yes, there's very t if, if the landlord does not comply with every, every single thing. every little thing, then then the court can dot the eyes, cross the right. t's. Right, so that, that right. kind of makes it sound like it's a little more protective of the renter. I, than I think it is. I think it landlord. is beca because uh, you know it's kind of a public policy. We want to protect people mm -hmm. who are tenants. Now, having said that, I mean, with regard to the landlord, if you dot the eyes and cross the t's when you go to court, you will get an eviction. And then what happens is then the sheriff gets involved and typically the sheriff will call the tenant and say all right I'm coming over so if your stuff's not out I'm gonna help you move um, yes really? and that's when that's when you drive when you drive down the street and you see people's stuff out on the curb that usually is either they've moved out and they've left their stuff or the sheriff is there kind of saying here we'll so put their stuff did they out. give you a when did they give you a time when they're gonna be there to do typically, that so you yeah, would know yeah typically the the sheriff does not okay. they don't have to but typically because the sheriff really isn't looking they don't want a big scene they don't right. want a problem um, one other point that I forgot to mention I wanted to make sure I mentioned if you're a landlord let's say earlier you don't pay the rent and I've really had it with you I have to follow all these steps I cannot just come to your place and lock you out I, I cannot come into your place and move your stuff out because that's your you stuff. Have to go yeah that's your stuff process. it's mm -hmm. your your, your it's your property it's your you, as long as you as long as the lease is in place it's your place now the other thing that is also um, people get confused about Let's say that um, let's say that you want to move out. You you found a better place, right. and so you're you're a great tenant. You you know you but you've decided to, you know you want to maybe you're going to go live with Michelle. So you like Michelle's place. So you if our, if we're on a month to month lease because maybe we had a year lease and and it has expired, but now we're on month to month. You have to give me 30 days notice. Now what people get confused about is they think okay today is March 25th, so I'm going to give Kim notice, and that just that means that as of April 25th, my lease is up. I can move out. Right, that's not how it works. How does it work? If the rent is due on the first of the month, you can give me notice now, but it doesn't really go into it doesn't go into effect until um, April first. The first of the month yes. when the rent was due. When so the you rent 30 was due. days from when the rent was exactly. due is what the notice is. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You can give it early, but you just need to know it that doesn't go into it effect. doesn't go into effect until the first of the month, and that means that then you're liable for rent until May first, and then and you could be out by May first. Likewise, if I give you notice, if I gave you notice today, you have until you know May first basically to be out. Okay. So, so what? Okay. Let's but this scenario, you have a year lease. Yes. It's one year, and you haven't been the greatest ten in the world mm -hmm. so the year is expired right what can the, the the person that owns the property do to say I want them out because uh, the, the, the date is expired you had a year lease right. done right so if the year lease is done that and you're still there it then it the law it basically says okay now we're gonna treat it as a month-to-month because -month. if we don't sign a new lease mm -hmm. that's the reason why if you are living in an apartment complex and your lease is coming up that the landlord is usually saying here you got to sign this new lease because they want to lock you in for a year right but if they don't lock you in for a year then it then the law interprets it as a month-to-month -month lease and so that then it two months from now you could give me notice and move out so after or, one year mm -hmm. the, the owner or the the, the landlord can mm -hmm. come and say I need you out by the end of the month right well, they have as long as they give you 30 days 30 notice days for yes, that one yes. okay and if and if the 30 days passes and you're still there then guess what now I got to give you the three-day notice to quit because you're Everything a holdover goes over and I got to go to small claims okay. yes so we it's yeah. a it's a process it isn't is a process it? Yes. is this something that for a, if a renter they're yeah. on the renting side of things do you, that you would want to get an attorney involved you know if, if you if you want to try 
try and break a lease, let's say let's say you're still within your one year lease that you signed mm -hmm. and you're, you're trying to break it, um, then yes, because you're gonna need a good reason to break it. So we've gotta look at okay. your lease and figure it out. Um, if you just are gonna give, maybe you're on month to month and you're gonna give your notice, I don't think you need an attorney. The big thing is just make sure that you understand the timing. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people, times people will call and they're like, I gave notice on March 15th and, and I'm only gonna pay for 15 days in April because I've already paid for March and we have to explain to them, no, you owe for the whole month of April. Right. Yeah, because you gave it early and it didn't start until April 1st. All right. So, yeah. so if people Great have eviction advice. questions yeah. and they want to get a hold of you. Yeah, just give us a call. <laughs> just give us a call. Yeah. Yeah, the pay, there's a couple Woman of pay phones somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> BearLawOffice.com. Yes. That works. Wonderful. Kim, thank you so much. All right. Thank Appreciate you. it. Great information yeah. as always. Yeah. 20 minutes.